Ultralight backpacking sucks. If you are into backpacking, then you've probably noticed that light gear is nice to have. And once you start dipping your toes into the ultralight world, it can get a little addicting. But at some point, ultralight backpacking gear just becomes ultra inconvenient. Today, we're gonna talk about where that threshold is and save you possibly from making the same mistakes that I did, save you some heartaches, save you some cash, because that shit ain't cheap. Gear to not go ultralight on. Number one, clothing. Now this one's kind of seasonally dependent because I definitely don't bring any extra clothes in the summertime, but you always want to have like a little bit of a warmer layer to put on because temperature drops at night. Obviously if you're going in the winter, this is something that is crucial. It can be tempting to drop extra layers, extra socks, all these things whenever you're going on long hikes. Having a few extra pair of dry socks if it's going to be rainy out, if you're going to have wet feet, having extra warmer layers for your core to keep warm in the winter months is such a good luxury to have have out there. Luckily, I've actually spent a lot of time outdoors working and whatnot over the years, and I've always kind of known what it takes in certain temperatures to keep warm. Uh, a lot of new backpackers might not be aware of how your body works in the uh, colder temperatures, especially uh, when the temperature drops at night when you're not moving around. It's a lot easier to prepare for a hike when you're moving and your body's uh, creating heat. And when you stop moving and you're just sitting around a camp, uh, you, you can get cold pretty quick. In the summer, you know, like I said, whatever, but in the winter, just don't skimp on the clothing. This is one of the first days I've actually broke out long sleeves. It's uh, definitely fall now, summer is over. It's getting kind of cold out actually. And nothing helps you warm up on a cold fall day than a nice ice cold brewski. Oh, that's good. Mm. Oh, look at the sun. It's getting all golden over there. Okay, number two, sleeping pad. So if you're a new backpacker, you might not know that when you're sleeping on the ground, it's gonna get cold. Even if the temperatures are in the 50, 60 degree Fahrenheit range, if you are sleeping on the ground without a pad, it is cold. This is common knowledge, but for you newbies out there, gotta have a sleeping pad if you're doing tent camping. And this is something worth noting to not go super ultra light on. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite on this one because I like super light sleeping pads. I use the Thermarest Uber light super light but it's also very comfortable when you're going super ultra light there there's little foam pads uh the thermarest z light i believe is lighter than what i have there's always that gossamer gear eighth inch foam pad that all the ultra light backpackers talk about and that thing just sucks. The brand climate also makes super ultra light pads like the x frame which can only be described as better than nothing. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite on this one because I do have a very ultra light pad, but it's worth noting because a lot of people don't really think the Thermarest pads are comfortable. I mean, they're wrong, but you know. sleep is definitely something that you want to invest in. After hiking all day, you got to get a good night's sleep to be able to recover and get that rest that's going to push you into the next day. Sleeping pads I found, it's just pretty much a trial and error. Everybody's different. Everybody likes something different. I know a lot of ultralight backpackers that do not go ultralight on sleeping pads and that's fine because you know, going ultralight is not about looking cool, getting the best gear. It's about carrying a pack that doesn't break your back and lets you enjoy your experience out there. Number three, rain gear. Once again, this is something that you can go ultralight on certain trips. I feel like that's, <laughs> I keep saying that for everything. Ultralight rain gear sucks. Uh, everything has its place. You have to do your planning, know what you're getting into in these trips, but rain gear is something that can make or break a trip. Obviously, if it's going to be super hot, 90 degree Fahrenheit, and you have a slight chance of rain, you don't really need a heavy raincoat. But if it's chilly, if you're looking into the freezing temperatures with some freezing rain, having really crappy lightweight rain gear is just going to suck. All rain gear is not created equal. This is something that a lot of new backpackers and, and me especially uh, when I was starting I did not know this just because something is labeled as waterproof does not mean it's going to be as waterproof as other materials I have a couple lightweight rain jackets that weigh about uh, six ounces and they're great for the summer but I do not dare bring those things if I'm expecting a ton of rain or if it's going to be chilly which by the way Rain can get cold in any climate. There's been days when I've been hiking in shorts and a t-shirt and when it starts raining, that water is cold and it cools you off fast. So I have what I call like a proper raincoat. It's a mountain hardware, double layer. It's very 
heavy I consider for a rain jacket. I know it's probably about a pound and a half, but it takes a lot of water to soak through. I've actually hiked in this thing all day long and in torrential downpours and not gotten wet at all. And that's very important to me. I'm somebody that I don't get cold like too bad in the core, but when it starts raining and when it gets wet, uh, I cool off really quickly. So proper raincoat, proper rain gear. Uh, if your legs get cold very quickly, Rain pants are always a good thing. Rain gear is something that you can skimp on very easily because you might not use it. You might be carrying it in your pack 100% of the time you're hiking. But if you are out there without proper rain gear, uh, it's going to suck. So we're talking about when ultralight gets inconvenient. This is one people are gonna hate on me for. I say it, I've said it in many, many videos, uh, but I'm gonna say it again. Super ultralight tents are normally single wall tents. I do not like single wall tents. Get a double wall tent. Single wall tents suck. Like I said before, anything that's waterproof will soak through eventually. And believe it or not, it doesn't even have to be raining for the inside of your tent to get wet. Drastic changes in temperature, as well as just your body uh, exhaling carbon dioxide in your tent, uh, you're gonna get a lot of moisture and condensation on the inside walls of your tent. This is where single wall tents suck. If you're rolling around in the middle of the night and that foot box of your sleeping bag rubs up against uh, the side of the tent, it's going to get wet. You're gonna be rubbing up all in that condensation in the middle of the night and it's not fun. <laughs> and that's, dude, that's one of my pet peeves. I freaking hate that. So I prefer double wall tents. Something I don't go ultra light on are tents. I love that inner bug net layer just to keep me away from the walls. It's a, it's just a little barrier that gives me peace of mind. I know I can roll around in there and I'm not going to be touching the wall that potentially has condensation on it. That inner mesh bug net layer, it usually weighs a little bit more. Double wall tents are most of the time going to weigh more than single wall tents, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Another thing to not go ultralight on, is food. I mean, I don't. I don't have to tell you this, right, <laughs> dude? Bring a lot of food. George, I'm hungry. Hang on, man. Hang on. Most of the time, you know, we're out in the we're out there like having little mini vacations on the weekend. We want to have a good time. So most of the time, people bring good food. Uh, if you get a little bit of that competitive bug in you like I have where you want to book out a lot of miles and stuff. It can be tempting to not bring a ton of food. And I've done this on several trips where I come out of the trip with pretty much nothing having eaten everything that I brought. But I also have a lot of experience in doing a lot of high distances so I know what type of uh, calorie intake my body needs to perform at its best. Being calorie deficient out there sucks. <laughs> I mean, Come on, you're out there to have a good time, so don't skimp on food. And don't just watch a ton of YouTube videos on ultralight backpacking and think that you have to go down that route. This stuff's cool, I get I get it, it's cool. I have tons of ultralight gear. But remember the point of going ultralight, and that's pretty much just to have everything that you need and still be comfortable. So I actually used to try to get really, really light back in the day, and I got my pack weight down really low, and then I started adding little luxuries here and there. It, it was it was fine the way it was, but my pack got so light that I had, you know, a little bit of room to spare, so to speak. And I was able to add a few things like a 25 inch wide sleeping pad. By the way, back on sleeping pads, don't go ultra light and get the 20 inch wide pad, get the 25. Like you will thank me. Well, you won't know if you've never had a 20, but you would thank me if you know. If you know, you know. But I also bring a pillow. I bring a pillow half the time when I go backpacking now just because I have the weight to spare. I can add a little bit more uh, stuff in my kit and it's comfortable, it's good, it doesn't hurt, and it's all about just getting out there and having fun. So if you guys wanna check out uh, like one of my loadouts that I took on my last trip, actually I went to Washington to the Enchantments, awesome backpacking trip. Still haven't even made the video yet, but that loadout is going to be right here. So thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos, hit that little bell, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't buy light beer. Full flavor weighs the same.